destroyed the carnivores. So I'm not going to even mention that because we know for a fact that we're not carnivores anymore. We completely destroyed that. Uh, I particularly want to talk about herbivores versus frugivores. That's what I want to talk about. Herbivores versus frugivores. Are we fruitarians or are we made to eat and consume plants? You know, and what we're going to do is we're going to bring forth physiology. We're going to bring forth biochemistry. We're going to bring forth anatomy, uh, nature, and common sense. And I will let you guys uh, judge. Now, before we get into this, uh, you know, my name is Yachai Raphael. Everybody call me Yaki Awaken. I am a biochemist. I am a certified master herbalist, uh, certified Reiki healer, certified detoxification specialist. I mean, anything you can think about when it comes to the healing community in this natural state. Uh, we have thousands and thousands and thousands of hours, clinical hours and clinical trials and studies in these things. And we have a lot of different plaques and a lot of different healing testimonies, not from my mouth, but from the people's mouth to back up all of my claims, my statements and everything I'm talking about. So, you know, uh, you just look behind me. I'm not playing. We have, oh, we have over a million dollars invested in just anatomy stuff, cadavers, equipment, healing homes, herbal stores. I'm, I'm in my warehouse right now. So we really, really, we really do this. We really do this family. All right. So y'all just sit back, get y'all a pen and a pad. And I want y'all to use y'all common sense and use y'all eye to realize what I'm saying. I've been saying this for over 10 years now. Uh, it's good to see that everybody is now jumping on the bandwagon, but we've been doing this for a very, very long time. All right. So again, we already annihilated the carnivores. We know for a fact that we're not carnivores. So I don't need to speak on Carnivores. If y'all want to see the stuff on that, just go and look at these three foods. It's what all you need. That's on my YouTube page under Yaki TV. We crush the omnivores and the carnivores. We don't need to speak on omnivores. We know that we're not omnivores. We know that we're not carnivores. The, the last two things that I need to talk about is, are we herbivores or are we frugivores? And all you have to do is look at your anatomy. When you look out into nature, you will see that birds have its own classification. Under birds, there's many different species of birds. Same thing when you look at felines and nature. Under felines, there's many different species of felines. You see that? You have your sager tooth tiger. You have your mountain tiger. Then you have your African tiger. You see that? You have your mountain lion. You have your African uh, uh, lion. You see that? You, you even have your jungle tiger. Even when you get into the bird kingdom or the fowl kingdom, you have your virtues, which eats nothing but meat. You have your parakeets, which eats nothing but fruit. But then you have, you have your, your hummingbirds, right? This eat nothing but nectar out of the fruit. But then you got certain other birds that eat nothing but seeds, even though that they are part of a bird family or part of the bird kingdom. So if you look out into nature, you will see that each different classification, whether it's a bird, whether it's a feline, whether it's a primate, whether it's a, a bear, all of them, depending on their geographical location and depending on their genetic makeup, they have a different type of food that they eat. And we're going to go through it. I can show you all. Look, Matter of fact. Watch this. Birds that eats fruits. These are just fruit only eating birds. Watch this, y'all. Whole thing just pop up. Whole thing. First bird that only eat fruits, y'all. And we're going to get into it. These are fruit only eating birds. You have the American robin. The American robin eats nothing but fruits. It, it loves berries. That's all it eats is berries. You also have the black collared bearbet. The black collared bearbet eats nothing but berries. It's all it eats. I don't eat nothing else. You also have the blaze wing parakeet. The blaze wing parakeets. Look at love is banana bread. It's all it eats fruits. All it eats fruits. Hold on, you got more. You have the blue crowned parakeet. The blue crowned parakeet. Look, eating nothing but berries again. All right. Then you have what's this one called? The blue neck to anger. Ten anger. How many? I ain't never even heard of this bird. Tear anger, eating nothing but fruits. But then we can go over into vultures. Vultures eat nothing but meat. They love roadkill. That's all they eat. You will never see a vulture eating nothing else but meat. 
What about a hawk and an eagle? They eat nothing else but meat. All of them are classified as birds, though. All of them have wings and all of them fly. But depending on their geographical location and their genetic makeup, they eat different things. So we can see that when we look out into nature, we can see that when we look out into the animal kingdom. Just like you have a mountain lion, then you have a, a regular lion that's in the jungle. Guess what? They eat different things. The mountain lion loves rodents. It loves fish. The jungle lion loves gazelle. It loves zebras. You see that? It loves things like that. Even when you get into the dog kingdom, they have a different specific diet based off their geographical location and their genetic makeup. So we do that to every animal and every species and every mammal in the in the in the mammal community. But the moment it comes to humans, we think that we can eat everything. Now, my question is this. If the bird, if you have omnivore birds, if you have herbivore birds, if you have frugivore birds, if you have all and you got carnivore birds, what about the human race? When you have frugivore humans, humans, when you have herbivore humans, wouldn't you have carnivore humans? Oh, when you have omnivore humans, we have to truly understand the psychological aspect of what I'm talking about here. Now, to figure out which category you in, all you have to do is look at the anatomy of your body because our anatomy is different than anybody else's anatomy here on planet Earth. For one, we are prokaryotic cells. We come from prokaryotes. We're not eukaryotic cells. We don't come from eukaryotes. We're prokaryotic cells. These are single cell baptism, ba uh, bacterial microorganisms. We're the most ancient species on planet Earth. With that being said, since we're the most ancient species on planet Earth and we're full of carbon and melanin, not saying that the other races is not, but they, they have a very little melanin content and carbon content than us. They CHO arrangement, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen is arranged very, very different from ours. Even when you get into the woman's vagina, the bacteria that's in the black woman's vagina is very diverse. The bacteria that's in the gut of the black man and the black woman is very diverse. Even the bacteria inside of us, they have 50 trillion cells. Guess how many cells you have, black man and black woman? You have 150 trillion cells. Your bone density, you have way more bone and calorie. Not only, look, you have ba you have way more calcium, you have way more zinc, you have way more phosphorus, you have way more phosphates, you have way more iron, you have way more selenium inside of your bones than them. So even your bones are more dense than them. This is going to require you to have a specific certain type of food. So then you get to the mouth, right? I just want y'all to look at something. I even printed out some pictures, y'all. This is a herbivore mouth. All right. Look, this is an herbivore mouth. They teeth don't go all the way back like ours. And I got many different herbivore mouth. Look at how big they teeth is. Then if you actually look at they, th they teeth in 3D, every teeth is a molar. Every teeth in your mouth is not a molar. You only got four molars. I mean, you got six molars, two up top. Two, two on two up top on both sides, two, uh, two at the bottom on both sides. Then you have your wisdom teeth if they grew in right. Look at these teeth. These are molars in the front made for grinding. Notice how they chew. They don't chew like this. They chew like this. Because they're grinding up the grass. Because guess what they eat? They eat grains and grass or grass seeds. Now, another thing. Look at a human teeth. You see where your molars are at? Your molars start back here, plus the wisdom teeth. So you got one, two, three, four. Here go the lateral sizers. Here go the canines. You got five, six, seven, eight. Then you have the wisdom teeth all the way at the back. You see that? When you look at an actual herbivore teeth, every teeth inside of their mouth is a molar. Guess what the molars are for? pulverizing for grinding up things like cellulose because grass is very very hard to break down kale is very very hard to break down vegetables is very very hard to break down if it's not a high yielding waterable vegetable like watercress and buck choy and stuff like that not only that most of your herbivores got more than one stomach guess how many stomachs you got black man black woman you only got one stomach just one and guess what that stomach is made for it's made for what? Fermentation. Guess how many these animals have? At least two. At least two. You look at a cow, how many stomachs a cow have? Four. Ooh -wee. You look at a bull, let's get into the bull stomach. At least two, sometimes three. 
Once you start really going into herbivore kingdoms, you're going to start understanding that they even have more stomachs to you. Not only that, let's talk about their intestines. Is their intestines longer or shorter than yours, black man, black woman? We let's talk about it. Is it longer or shorter? Hmm? And why do they have so many stomachs? Why do they chew of the cud? Because they have to get it into one stomach, and then one stomach is literally at a 6.2 on the potential hydrogen scale. Then they throw it back up and chew it and grind it again because it's so hard to grind down to break through the cellulose and to break through all the anti-nutrients that's inside the vegetables. Yes, like phytic acids inside the vegetables. Yes, like uh, photoestrogen inside the vegetables. Yes, like lectins inside the vegetables. Uh, what about o oxalate? inside the vegetables and saponins and tannins inside the vegetables. So they got to chew this food, pulverize the food, put it in one digestional tract, take it to one stomach at a 6.2 on a potential hydrogen scale. They got to throw the food back up in their mouth, chew it again. Then it goes through another different stomach that's at a 4.1 potential hydrogen scale. And then they got to go through another stomach just to even get out for they can really truly break through the cellulose and break through the anti-nutrients or what you would call the natural herbal size and pesticides that is grown from the vegetables before they can even yield any glucose energy off of it. You can't do all of that because you only have one set of teeth. You don't have mole. Every teeth you got ain't a molar. See that these are made for fruits. Not only that, let's talk about the salivary glances, the, the, the secretion of amylase and the secretion of actual trypsin that's inside of your mouth that is made to break down, that's made to break down simple fruits, alkaline fruits, that's what the saliva is for. It's to help you break down fruits. Then you swallow these fruits and then it goes inside of your stomach. It passes the cardiac sphincter. Then it goes inside of your stomach. Then the hydrochloric acid actually help you break these foods down more. Now, what I, what I sit up here and lie and say that the hydrochloric acid inside of your stomach can't break down vegetables, I'd be lying if I said that. Yes, it can. But do vegetables fully break down in the human anatomy? No, it don't. Think I'm playing. Eat kale. Just eat kale. And kale is high in oxalates. Y'all know what an oxalate is? These are called compound binding calcium frequencies or compound binding calcium chemicals. It literally binds to calcium. You got so many reports of people getting gout. So many reports of people getting all type of crystallizations, calcifications. Not only that, gall gallbladder stones from eating too much kale because what kale does, it, since it can't break down because the cellulose is so tough because we are not really supposed to be eating it. These are made for other species like herbivores and you are not a herbivore. You are a frugivore. What it does is it binds to all the calcium in the system and it starts stripping the bones of calcium. Y'all think I'm lying? Just look this stuff up. There's plenty government cases on this stuff. Plenty government cases. Look, this stuff is so real. We have a whole television deal from it. We presented so much evidence that they're going, they gave us a TV network show where it's called Food Forensic Investigations. This is how real this stuff is, and this is how controversy it is, and this is going to change the whole way we look at everything. Why do you think they created juicers? Juicers was not created after your digestional system. Yes, juices was created to actually juice vegetables, not fruit, because technically you don't need to juice fruits because you can drink your fruits. Guess what a juicer was made for? And guess what it assimilates? It assimilates an omnivore teeth and an omnivore digestive system because you can't chew through all that cellulose and the hydrochloric acid inside of your stomach, even though it's hot enough to break it up, it can't break up the elasticity of the plant cellular membrane wall. So what they have to do, they have to create all of these different juices to assimilate and emulate an emulator actual what y'all a herbivore to go through all of that stuff to break up the cellular membrane and the cellulose of the plant where you can actually yield glucose and all of the other phytonutrients from it y'all see that uh oh let's keep y'all let's keep going let's keep going so once it goes through the duodenum Tell me why that the bacteria that actually ferments and break down your food inside of the human anatomy is totally different from the bacteria that is breaking down the food inside of an herbivore. Oh, we total different bacteria. You have something called lactose bacillus. You have something called bifido or bifidum bacteria. You have something called candida albumins. But when you start looking inside of the actual vegetable kingdom and you start looking at the herbivores and what's inside of theirs, they have something called, uh, uh, matter of fact, I wrote it down. Where is it at? Dang, I think it's called it's called ruminococcus, ruminococcus. And they have another bacteria called ciliates. 
You don't have that inside your di digestinal tract. You know why you don't have that inside your digestinal tract? Because you are not made to break down vegetable matter like that. Not only that, let's talk about the consciousness. All right. You have different kingdoms, y'all. The animal kingdom is up under us based off of consciousness. We have more consciousness. You have to power consciousness. Consciousness have to be powered by something. Guess what your consciousness is powered by? Fructose, not glucose. That's why y'all walking around acting the way y'all acting. Sleepy, got adrenal fatigue, can't think right, hung, angry all the time, having competitions, talking about other people instead of living your best life because you are being fueled by a, by, by a power system to power up your consciousness that's not powerful enough. Look, if you look at the vegetable kingdom, it only yields 9,000 angstroms of energy. Let me say that again. The vegetable kingdom only yields 9,000 angstroms of energy. Oh, we. That sounds like that's something for a horizontal vertebrae. Not a vertical vertebrae because, you know, we walk upstanding. That's why we have thumbs. Show me a herbivore with thumbs. Oh, we. Show me a herbivore with thumbs. You ain't going to see it. We was made to pick fruits with our hands. That's why you got thumbs for you can grab things. Show me one herbivore that can walk up to a tree with both of their hands, pick an orange or pick an apple or pick a mango and actually peel that mango. For when they can't do it. Oh, they got hoofs. Carnivores got claws. Herbivores got claws. Got hoofs. How, how can they do it? All you have to do is go in nature and it'll show you the food that was specifically de designed for you. You see that? I hope y'all really seeing what I'm talking about here. That's the reason why you have five fingers and you have thumbs. That's the reason why you have tasting teeth and you only have six to eight molars, but you look at an herbivore, every teeth in a mouth is a molar for grinding. That's the reason why they have to create juicers to actually emutate and assimilate with an actual uh, 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 herbivore for you can break up the green juices and get the cellulose out of the way for you can yield the phytonutrients and all the different amino acids and trace minerals from it for you can build your molecular structure. Because you physi physiological wise, it's not you're not ready to even eat that food and break it down not only that hold on the average man well in america is 200 pounds now because we all are we all are obese but the average man in 1999 was only 160 pounds huh your average herbivore is a fucking ton hold on let me say that again let me let me say that because that's that's big the average man is 160 pounds. The average fruit reward, because I'm saying we're frugivores. Is we all eating fruits? No. Can you survive without eating fruits? Yes. Th that goes without question. There's a lot of people not eating fruits. They're surviving. But we need to be better than surviving. We need to be living. We need to be living. We need to be operating at our right consciousness. But let me go back to what I said. The average man is 160 pounds. The average herbivore is a fucking ton. Ooh wee. Ooh wee. I'm just saying, do we need to keep going? So we went over the teeth. All right? We went over the stomachs. You only got one stomach. We went over the hydrocaloric acid inside the stomach content. We went over how they chew they actual food, take it into a stomach, then throw it back up and got to rechew it again because they have to constantly break through the cellulose. Huh? How about digestion? Do you realize to get rid of actual fruits, I mean, uh, vegetables, it takes six, look, the least six hours. Guess what the most? 48 hours to really get rid of vegetables. Guess how long it takes to get rid of fruits? Two hours at the most. Oh, we. Hold on, two hours at the most. So that means I spend less energy breaking down fruits, but I yield more energy from fruits. You spend more energy breaking down vegetables and you don't you only yield 9,000 angstroms of energy from the vegetable. Like we gotta make this make sense. We have to make this make sense. I spend less energy breaking down H3O2 composite fruits, carbon constituent chains. I spend way more energy breaking down vegetables, but I yield more energy, 12 angstroms, 12,000 angstroms of energy 
eating my fruits. I only yield 9,000 angstroms of energy with my vegetables, but it took me more energy to break it down. It took me more angstroms of energy from my digestional tract, from my parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system, using my intrinsic nervous system, the autonomic nervous system, sending serotonin, melatonin, and all different types of melanin neurotransmitters just to break the shit down. Spent all of that energy, plus quantum energy, breaking down vegetable matter. And then I didn't even yield as much energy from it than what I needed to break it down. That's why they created juicers, family. Remember, juicing was not made for fruits. It was made for vegetables. When you look back in 1950s, when you start seeing the first steel juicers for fruits, it was only a juicer for sister fruits. Literally, you cut your fruit in half and you put them in there and you squeeze them and then you was able to squeeze your citric, like your oranges, your lemons and your limes and stuff. They didn't have an actual juicer for fruits back then because they understood the concept of eating your water. They made the juicer for vegetable matters because your black ass don't have the physical anatomy to break down vegetables like that. You don't. You don't. Should we only eat fruits? Good question. I say yes, but I say right now, let's be real. We have been eating so much, so many other different fruits and our anatomy to basically change and our chromosomes, even our structures done change. You going to all fruit diet now forever. You're going to go have a major, major, major detox and that detox might take you down for a while. But yes, we are frugivores. Why not eat your only food? Now, do I believe that we will make it back to frugivore uh, kingdoms and different lifetimes? I do. I believe that the next lifetime, I'm, I'm even thinking five to seven generations from now, uh, we will be back to nine. If I keep doing the work and the teams keep doing the work and all the other frugivores, peace to the gods, peace to the earths out here that keep doing the work, we'll be back to the frugivore kingdom. You know what I'm saying? I think we'll be back to that. We have, se we have several hundred people doing it now. Only eat fruits right now. No, nothing else but fruits. So it's not far-fetched and we don't have that long distance to go. But uh, I mean, right now, I don't see it. I don't see it because we still having videos like this. If I still got to get on here and have a video like this, we not there yet. You know what I'm saying? And then you got a, other people that's opposing, not really putting forth no provoking thought or bringing forth the evidence. They just, you know, reading, reading from a man's book and, you know, stuff not really being having a clinical trials and being in the fields, like learning for self and experiencing for self. They want to get their knowledge from everybody else instead of from self. So, you know, we got to We got to shift through that as well. It's going to be a lot of shifting through that, too, because people don't like clinical trials no more. People don't like to get their hands dirty, get into the field. People don't like to operate and test on themselves no more so we got to weed through that as well so i give i get it i give it another lifetime or so you know seven generations hopefully if not then you know we're gonna keep it pushing we're gonna keep it pushing but we are frugivores by nature we are frugivores we were made to eat the food that grows the closest to the sun the food that grows the closest to the sun because we are sunny sentient beings is fruits your mangoes grow very high that's a fruit. Apples grow high. That's a fruit. Your key limes, your grapes. These are all things that grow closest to the sun. These are our foods. Even if you look at the levels and the heights, it shows you what foods are for you. You, you don't stand on all fours. Your neck is not elongated and faced towards the ground like a cow all day or like a Brahmin, like a bull all day. They can sit on all fours all day and night and just eat from the ground because their vertebrae is made like that. They are horizontal. You are vertical. You was made to stand upright. That you're, that without literally messing up your posture, the easiest thing you can eat is fruit that grows from the tree. That's why you can do this. Show me an herbivore that can do this, y'all. Show me an herbivore that can do this. Show me one. You ain't going to see it. Show me an herbivore that can do this. Look, hey, show me an herbivore that can grab a berry from a tree. Show me this is a tree. Look, this is this is an actual this is a, a tree and a berry. Show me an herbivore that can walk up to that tree, grab it. Say if that berry got a haul on it. They can't eat the haul because the haul is most likely poisonous. This is a natural pesticide and herbicide in it. You either gonna find a lectin in it or phytoestrogen in it. So show me an actual herbivore that can go to the tree, pick the tree with its hand with a disposable thumb, pick the haul off the berry and eat the berry. You won't see it showing you that fruits is not made for herbivores and herbivores is not made to eat fruit. Just like carnivores. If you look at a carnivore in the jungle, guess what? In nature, it eats only meat. It eats only meat. Birds with seeds, they only eat seeds. Then you start seeing actual domestic animals, animals that's been pushed out of their natural habitat. That's where you start seeing omnivores come in at. Omnivores is nothing but a freaking scavenger. It's a scavenger. 
It's going to eat what it get its hands on because it's not in its natural habitat. Just like you see the domestic gorilla or the gorilla that they push into the mountains away from the low plains. Gorillas are naturally frugivores. They didn't used to eat nothing else. This shit just changed 100 years ago when they started eating other things and eating ants for protein and stuff like that because we are destroying the soil and all their damn food. But if you catch a gorilla, a primate in its natural habitat, it's a frugivore. It's a frugivore. This is simple study, y'all. This is simple studies. And look at the anatomy of a gorilla. Do gorillas got thumbs? Yes. Do gorillas walk upright most of the Yes. See that? They're part of the primate family just like us. Look at their diet. Look how they eat. And they're not meat eaters. You look totally different from an herbivore. Your teeth is totally different from an herbivore. You don't have four to two stomachs. You got one stomach. Your digestinal tract all the way together is about 30 feet. You see that? The hydrocaloric acid in your stomach is different from a herbivore's. The bacteria that help ferment or putrefy your food is different from a herbivore's. You weigh, weigh less than a herbivore. You don't have the teeth to grind or pulverize your herbs to break through the cellulose like a herbivore because you are a frugivore. The, the, uh, the salivary glands, the secretion, the amulose, the amulopectin, all the different trypsin that actually come from your salivary glances to break down your food can't break down her. It can't break them down. Why you think when you take herbs, you either got to put them in teas, you got to cook them, you got to put alcohol on it to strip and break through the actual cellulose to make tinctures, or you got to put it in a nut grinder, grind that shit up to a powder to break through the cellulose. You have to use all types of man-made equipment to even break through the herbs, to even use the herbs, or you got to use hot water and make them as a tea, or you got to sit it in cold water for 24 to 48 hours to start really astringing all the phytonutrients out of it. That's because you're not an herbivore. We're not made to eat herbs and vegetables all day. The herbs is for the healing of the nation. The herbs is for rebuilding. They have a purgatory effect on them from all the anti-nutrients in them. It gives you the same purgatory effect like alcohol gives you. You drink alcohol, in the morning you're going to have a headache, you're going to be throwing up, and you're going to be shitting everywhere. Same thing as you drink my three bitters. You're going to be in the morning, you're going to have a, a detoxification headache that we call a healing crisis. You're going to be shitting and pooping and throwing up everywhere and urinating everywhere. They have a purgative effect, the laxative effect on the body saying that's what herbs do but your true food is what yields you the most energy and fuel and the food that yields you the most energy and, and fuel will be your fruit why you think we got thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people on fruit right now single-handedly we ain't even talking about the ancestors and who I learned from. We ain't talking about Baba Arise. We ain't even, we ain't talking about, uh, uh, you got Robert Morris. We ain't talking about Dr. Robert. We ain't, look, we got people older than me that's been doing this older than me. Got more healing testimonies than me. I just probably got about 4,000. We talking about people that's 50,000 healing testimonies in, got their own clinics and everything. Guess what they doing? All fruit. Fruit diets is healing these people, cleansing the vessel, rebuilding the molecular structure, getting the, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system back online. You can't even heal a neurological problem on vegetables. You can't. You can't. Guess what? Guess what the brain need? The brain need oxygen therapy. Guess where that's coming from? Your berries. That's coming from your berries. Guess what plant matter causes? Plant matter causes oxidative stress. Oxidative stress. That's why if you leave your salad out for a long time, what does it do? It turns brown. It starts rusting. Why is that? Oxidative stress, creating free radicals. That's why if you're healing and, and you're cleansing too fast on the fruits, what we tell you? Uh, eat a salad. Because what the salad is going to do? The salad is going to slow the healing process down. The glucose is going to is going to slow the fructose down. That's why when people are healing too fast and they start having healing crisis and their skin starts, their skin start taking a poop on themselves, they start getting real bad fevers and they just pooping everywhere and can't stop pooping because that vagus nerve and fully relax itself. Guess how we get them back? on track. We slow down the healing. We slow down the energy that's used to detox the body by giving them vegetables. And guess what the vegetable does? It stops the healing modality. Did y'all know that? We. I've been doing this over 10 years, y'all. I've been doing this over 10 years. All y'all gotta do is look it up. Look up all my video. How y'all think I'm doing videos like this day after day after day after day after day? We have to make it make sense. Fruits is for your, physi your, your physiology. Fruits is for your biochemistry. Fruits is for your conscious mind. 
I'm not knocking vegetables, but you are not a herbivore. Your, your herbs is for the healing of the nations. You use those when you need a purgatory factor, when you sick. Other than that, you're supposed to be on fruits. Now, will we make it back to that in this lifetime? We probably won't. But what's wrong with fucking trying? What's wrong with speaking the truth and showing you who we used to be? Even when you get into the, the codex of what we're going to call your biochemistry laboratory scientific book that we call the Bible. You know, not your religious book. I'm talking about for specifically biochemistry, specifically for science. When you look at the book of Genesis chapter 1 and 29, it told you what we were supposed to be eating. The fruit bearing seed after its kind shall be meat unto you. Hold on. So the fruit in Hebrew is pari. Pari. So the fruit bearing seed. That's the reproductive part of a plant. Fruit after its kind. Showing you it's going to be many different variations of these fruits bearing seed. Seeded fruits supposed to be meat. We didn't change the whole concept of what meat is. Meat is. It's not flesh from a damn animal. The animals is your brothers and sisters. They just operated a different consciousness to help you cultivate the land for you can live longer. We ain't supposed to be killing them and eating them. If we kill and eat every animal in the world, what's going to cultivate the land? We need they poop. We need they bacteria. We need they spit. We need they pheromones because all of that is what raises the land. It cultivates the soil. But we eating them all. Or you eating up all the fish in the sea. You eat up all the catfish, all the lobster, all the crabfish. You eat up everything that cleanses the sea of algae. You eating it up, and then the fish that you that's that don't that's not a bottom feeder, which you ain't supposed to be eating anyways, because they keep the they, they keep the uh, the ecological system of the ocean perfect for you, because the ocean is what really brings oxygen to the world. Everybody think it's the trees. No, trees only bring about a good. What, 16% of oxygen to the entire world? Do y'all realize the ocean? The ocean gives, uh, gives over 70% of its oxygen to the entire earth. And y'all are just fucking it up. Eating all the clean fish. Eating all the unclean fish. Wondering why your salmon got shit in it. <laughs> because you done ate all the, you done ate all of the, the shit eating fishes. And yeah, you see you with your shrimp, you got to pull out that little strip part. That's the digestional tract. Got all poop in it. Eating your chitterlings, you are not a carnivore, you are not an omnivore, you are not an herbivore, you are a frugivore, you are a fruitarian. You're a fruitarian. I don't have to debate this. I don't need, I didn't show so much work. Show the work. Everybody want to talk and sound intellectual. Show the work. Disprove this. Disprove this. Disprove these. Disprove this. Disprove the pancreas, which is what we're going to talk about next. Disprove the pancreas. Over 4,000 4, enzymic reactions. Over four of them. Producing sodium bicarbonate. Can sodium bicarbonate break down vegetables? Not only no, but hell no. It can't. Look it up. Look it up. But guess what? Sodium bicarbonate can help break down. Fruits. Oh, we. And then if you look at the gallbladder, you can tell that we're supposed to be eating uh, 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 fatty acid fruits too, like avocados, bananas here and there. Even some nuts. Even some nuts like Brazilian nuts, high in selenium. But guess what you have for that? You have the liver producing what? Bow. Bow salts. Chine. Guess what it's hold by? The gallbladder. Then these gallbladders, the, the actual bowel that's made from it is made to break down the avocados, made to break down the bananas, made to break down the nuts. Huh? But when we talk about beans and we talk about seeds and we talk about vegetables and we talk about grains, all these foods that you think is for your human anatomy when it's not, we healing thousands of y'all on this food. Y'all realize I don't even heal meat eaters for real. Meat eaters are not even attracted to me and my content. Guess who attracted to me and my content? Plant-based vegan eaters. And all of y'all still sick. Why is that? You can't blame it on the meat because you don't eat none. So what is making you sick still? <laughs> Look, these, these, <laughs> these are conversations we're going to have to start having, family. I'm just saying. We're going to have to start really talking about these things. Hemp seeds is cool. Not all seeds, but hemp seeds is cool. Hemp seeds is cool. All I'm just saying, look, when we going to start talking about these things? Hmm? 
Win. I'm just saying, family, you are a frugal void. Am I judging you for eating vegetables? No. I eat vegetables. But let's not sit here and act like vegetables is making us better. It's not, man. It's not. I'm not judging you. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a real, I'm as real as it get. I don't eat all fruits. Now, my diet is, do consist of 90% fruits. It does. You know what I'm saying? Honestly. But, you know, I eat other things, too. I'm a plant-based eater, though. But I don't eat gnarly fruits, either. You know what I'm saying? I don't. So, like, we just got to start keeping it real with ourselves, y'all. We just got to keep it real with ourselves. And we got to really start being true biochemists. So, we went over the teeth. We went over the mouth. We went over the stomach. We went under the lung digestion. We went over the anti-nutrients. We went over the hands and the thumbs. We went over the vertical vertebrae. We went over the canines. See that? Do you realize that herbivores have something called nine, nine distinctive? <laughs> Look. They have something called nine, nine distinctive N O N distinctive canines. They don't even have canines. They mouth is made just for vegetation. They don't even got it. They don't even got it. These are literally called the canines of an herbivore. They called nine distinctive canines. Every teeth in their mouth was made for grinding. Only your back molars was made for grinding. Ooh wee! And I guess what? And guess what? They was made for grinding the skin of fruits, not cellulose. Because you can't even break through it. <laughs> Man. And we went over how vegetables yield 9,000 angstroms of energy. Wee hoo, good job. Then we talking about fruits that yield 12,000 angstroms of energy. Just saying, family. Just saying. So just keep that in mind, y'all. Be careful with the information that y'all are entertaining. All right? Be very, very careful with the information that y'all are entertaining. All information is not good information. And a lot of teachers are teaching from ego, jealousy, and pride. And that's going to always hurt the people. All right? That's going to always hurt the people. Have a, have a spirit of discernment, family. That's all I'm saying. And let these people works show. Let these people work show. All that talking, no. Let people show the works. Let the works show. No, I'm not giving nobody name power. I'm not mentioning nobody name, y'all. I, I, I refuse to blow anybody else up off of my platform again. They can call me out all they want. Let's see them works. Let's see the works. Let's see the let's see the love spirit. You know what I'm saying? Where's the where's the love at? Where's the community work at? Let's see that. Let's see that. That's what it's about. Every herbalist should be together, healing together. We supposed to be unified, not bickering and arguing and going back and forth with one another. I shouldn't have to get on here and do this. I shouldn't. But it's, it's so many people being deterred from the path. And it's so many people that are starting to question their own self when they know. See, you know when something, right? You questioning that because that's, and that's what demons do. They cause confusion. They turn things upside down. I shouldn't be arguing with no other herbalists. I shouldn't. We should be click tight because we all call ourselves healers, right? Most of y'all learn from me anyway. We should be, we need to form a, a, a coalition. We need to form an herbalist coalition or something. All right, you, you, you have a different ideology than me? Cool. If, if your healing methodology work, I don't have nothing to say about it. I don't have nothing to say about it. If it work, that's cool. You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's get up together and, and let's start a coalition. The last thing we need to be doing is having dick contests and having intellectual contests that you won't win anyway with me, not intellectual wise. Having intellectual contests and, and we leaving the people in the balance or we leaving the people confused or we leaving the people hurt or we leaving or, or we we are we're putting negative impressions on the people. Now we got y'all wanting to see a debate, wanting to see a fight like this, the damn WFC or the WWE or this a, a, a fucking boxing tournament. It's not that. We are here in the name of healing. We're in the spirit of healing. We're in the spirit of Orula. We're in the spirit of healing of Rafa'a, Raphael, Rofika. This is a healing energy. Why are we going back and forth with one another? It don't even make sense. So yeah, so uh I'm gonna go in depth. Show y'all for uh, you know, show y'all. I'm gonna do a whole presentation over this. We're gonna totally knock this herbal war stuff out of the window. 
know what I'm saying? Uh, am I telling you to stop eating herbs? I'm not telling you to stop eating herbs. I sell herbs. Am I telling you to stop eating vegetables? I'm not telling you to stop eating vegetables. Every now and then, I eat uh, watery vegetables. I'm just telling you to think and to prepare for what we're going. We're going into a frugivore kingdom. That's where we're heading, y'all. So start preparing, preparing your mind, your body, and your soul for it. Uh, we're not, we we not going to be selling herbs for a long time no more. The consciousness and the healing technology is changing. We have figured out how to tap into the biology of belief. So just a belief alone will change your physiological uh, structure and change your biological structure. You know, look up Dr. Bruce Limpton. Look at, look at Greg Braddon. The whole evolutionary process that we are going through is going back to them fruits and going back to the H3O2. And then from there, we're going to go to breatharianism where we're not going to even need food because believe it or not, plants don't want to be eaten either. Plants don't like to be eaten. That's why they gave you their reproductive part. Notice that even when you look at that part, plants don't like to be ate. And that's why they have all of these different what you call anti-nutrients to help kill your ass straight up. What do you think a saponin is? What do you think that is? <laughs> huh? What do you think a phytoestrogen is? What do you think an oxalate is? What do you think a lectin is? What do you think phytic acid is? What do you think carbonic acid is? These are plants defense mechanisms and they kill the shit out of uh, uh, ants and stuff like that. They kill them. Ants eat these things. They die. These things, they start slow diseases in the human body because we're much bigger. But notice that uh, a herbivore, a two-ton animal can eat it all day and be healthy off of it. Show you that that's food for them, not food for humans. It's coming to a point where we're not going to be eating that anymore either. If, 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 if it take you to kill and destroy it for you to borrow energy or charge from it, then that's not real food. We have to start thinking conscious-wise and where we're going at in this evolutionary pool, where we're expanding our consciousness to. We're not going to be eating anything no more, drinking anything no more. Give it, give it a few, give it lifetimes after lifetime. I'm telling y'all, we're going to be breathing. We're going to be able to get all the phytonutrients and everything we need from the air and from the electrical magnetic grid. They already made quantum computers and have all types of quantum coding doing it already. They got patches that can heal you right now. Patches. They got something called med beds where they ground them into the soil and it literally detox your body while you sleep overnight. They are literally biohacking. I ain't going to even call it biohacking, but they realize how to copy the quantum codes that's inside of the herbs. Copy, copy the quantum codes that's inside of the fruits, inside of the minerals. Okay, so the soil is deficient in minerals. Well, look, this is a mineral that we didn't copy. This is epigenetic code. Just put it under your tongue. Like they, we are, this shit is expanding. And we still arguing about herbs? Come on, man. It's expanding. We still arguing about this stuff? Y'all better get y'all mind right. Y'all better catch up or you're going to get left behind. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Not this air. No, nah, facts. Of course, I said many different lifetimes. Earth is purging herself right now. This air is going to be good in a minute. Earth is purging herself. Why do you think it's heating up around here? You see that? Only person that can withstand this heat is the, the mighty ones, the almighties. Why do you think I say peace, God, peace, almighties? I see y'all. Earth is, we are cancers to the earth. We have become cancers to the earth. And she's going through her detoxification process. If you haven't expanded yourself consciously, you're going to get left out. You're going to be left behind. And then we're going to be left on top of the ashes and we're going to regenerate the new world. And we're going to push human consciousness, human consciousness further than anybody else ever before. We are our ancestors reincarnated coming back to finish the job, man. Straight up. So let's quit bickering. Let's quit fighting. Let's quit arguing. Let's stop talking about stuff we don't know what we're talking about because y'all don't know what y'all talking about. And let's get together. Let's hug and love on each other and let's heal the people together, man. If you ain't talking about that, then what you talking about? Then what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? And the creator, the creator don't have flesh. You know what I'm saying? We need to quit worshiping men. A lot of us is worshiping men. Regurgitating Google and what pastor said and what he said and what they said. What about what you said? What about your experience? What about your hands in the field? What about what you study? What about what you got through your meditation? What the ancestors have put inside of your heart? What about you? Huh? Every tub have to sit on its own bottom. I'm going to say this again. I'm going to get up off of here. Every tub have to fit on its own bottom, family. All right, so y'all can go through this video. Uh, I'm going to keep it up for a minute. I'm going to take this down. 
uh, by next Tuesday because I'm gonna actually do an official video with the presentation and everything. I will be live tomorrow. Tomorrow at 8:30 Central Standard Time, I will be live, and we going over some some dope information. I got an amazing presentation. I'll be live on uh, Yaki uh, TV, and I'll be live on my Facebook Yaki Hickman. Anybody that want to see me in uh, Detroit, September the 10th. At Wayne State University College. Make sure y'all come out and show me love. Click the link in the bio and uh, grab them tickets. They are selling out fast. I love all of y'all. Yes, every tub family got to sit on his own bottle. Straight up. You came in this world by yourself. You going out by yourself. Unless you was born a twin. But you had to pass through that canal. And you had to smack through them planetary systems and that NATO, that NATO travel chart by yourself. Remember that. You know what I'm saying? Should no man be governing a God over you. You governing God over your own self because we're a reflection of the God that's in the, that's, that's in the heavenly realms, y'all. That's all I'm saying, family. So, hey, learn. You learn by experience. You don't learn by, by the teachings of, of, of others. You learn by the experience and the mistakes of others. That's how you truly, truly learn. Not by the teachings, but by the mistakes of others. That's how you learn. Do some research, family. Really, really search out matters before y'all get on here and y'all start running y'all mouths or y'all have, you know, dead competition with one another and all of that. What you think about Dr. Malachi York? Uh, personally, I don't I don't really know him personally. I don't know him personally. I heard a lot of good things about him, though. But I, I never watched any of his teachings, y'all. I, I don't know. I've never watched not one Malachi York a uh, video. I heard about him probably 11 years ago when I was very, very heavy into the Hebrew Israelite movement. Uh, that's when I that's when I heard about him, and uh, all I heard was good teachings about him. Though I never really heard nothing bad, and the bad stuff I did hear, I'm pretty sure it came from the the FBI intelligence putting out bad information about him. That's what they do all. That's what they do to all the many messiahs that come through. You know they got to discredit them. You know what I'm saying? But as far as like. What I heard, I heard nothing but good stuff. I heard he was an amazing teacher. I heard he took care of his people, and I heard they was in Georgia. Heard about him building pyramids, but I, I, I personally never watched the video uh, of his teachings and stuff like that. So, you know what I'm saying? Shouts out to the brother. It's a lot of people. It's a whole nation he done built. So I have nothing, I have nothing but respect to Mal uh, nothing but respect for Malachi uh, Z. York. Now, y'all know I rock with Savy now. Just because I don't agree with everything he say don't mean I don't rock on him. I love Savy. He the one who started my journey. Savy and my eye started my journey. What matters most? What matters most is the people healing. That's what matters. Yes, it's called Bruce Lipton, the biology of belief. You are not a Hebrew Israelite anymore. I'm always a Hebrew Israelite. What do a Hebrew mean? Abari Yisraeli. Abar means one who crosses over. One who crossed over from the flesh to, to the spiritual realm. I have done that. It's Yisrael. Yisrael means connected. El means power. One who's di directly connected to source. So yes, I am a Hebrew Israelite. Uh, or or Ebri Abari Yisrael. Yes, I am. I said when I was deep into the Hebrew Israelite community. Am I a part of the community? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. And ain't nothing but bickering, arguing, piss contests, false doctrine, people thinking they know everything, men dis disrespecting a black woman and all types of stuff. So, no, I'm, I'm not actively in the community. I'm doing my own thing. But, yes, I still identify as a Hebrew Israelite. Why are people obsessed with others, another's identity? The reason why people are obsessed with other people identity is because they don't know who the hell they is <laughs> love that's why see when, when you when you comfortable in your own skin and you realize and you love you for who you are you don't even be worried about what anybody else identify with i rock with anybody that rock with me and my people you can be a hebrew israelite you can be a nuapian you can be a muslim you can be whatever the hell you want to be long as you ain't going against nature and you have love for my people we can rock we can rock and that's something that the Hebrew Israel, when I was in the Hebrew Israelite, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? What's your take on the Orisha? Who are you talking about? Ogun, Oshun, Elegbe, Orula? Hmm? The spirit of Orisha, the, Af the African Pantheon, Pantheon, uh, I feel like it represents the seven uh, chakras, it represents the seven seas, it represents uh, the 12 cranial nerves. Uh, I think the Orisha is uh, powerful. I think the Orisha is powerful. I most definitely think the Risha is powerful. So I'm not knocking anybody that's into that either. I'm not. 
talk more about spiritual existence, please. Experiences, please. I will. I got y'all. What's your opinion on Buddhism? I love Buddhism. If you if you look at uh, Christ Yahushua words and, and Buddha words, they line up parallel word from word. Buddha talked about the kingdom of God being within. Christ Yahushua talked about the kingdom of God being within. Buddha talked about as above, so below. Uh, uh, leaving back your animalistic nature and sacrificing your flesh and becoming a new man and dying daily. Christ talked about the same thing. So, uh, Buddhism is a good philosophy to me. I think any religion that's not, uh, that don't change history, I think any religion, uh, where the person that's over you giving you the word that's, that, that doesn't become your God, I think it's a, it's a good tool for ascension. I think religion is actually a good tool for ascension, but the way we have used religion, we have used religion, uh, basically for, for monetary gain. We have turned religion into, uh, a piss contest and we use it for oppression now. You know, just like they did did it with us. We didn't turn it into a book of oppression. Uh, whenever you start worshiping a book murder, more than you more than you worship the creator, it's an issue. The moment that you get a book, whether it's the Quran, whether it's the Bible, whatever book you want to name, the moment that you start worshiping writings that man wrote down like it's God, she hey, it's where shit starts. So everything starts getting fucked up right there. When you start worshiping, the book said, the book told me to kill my children. Because they disown you gonna go kill your children? No, nah, play it. That ain't that ain't that ain't chicken. That's not a real God. That's most definitely a demonic entity. Just saying. The book, what a book said. So the moment, the moment you start, the moment you start worshiping writings that man wrote down, and you start ignoring the common sense and the voice in your head, when you know that what was written down ain't right, I think that's where, you know, the deception of religion. It's really messed up our people and, and took a bad, 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 bad turn on our people's psychological aspect. That's it. Also, can you speak about the creation of Christianity? Yes, Christianity came from Ethiopia, but the Ethiopians got it from the Egyptians. And the Egyptians got it from Nubia. And the Nubians uh, got it from the Natufians. And the Natufians uh, got it from Anunnaki. That's where Christianity came from. So if you really want to dive deep back into like the birth of the Christianity movement, the Trinity concept and all of that, uh, it goes back to Inki and Enlil. Then from Inki and Enlil, you see that they taught it to the Natufians. Then you see the Natufians taught it to the Nubians. The Nubians then taught it to the Kemets. And then the Kemets taught it to Ethiopia. And then you see this whole birth of Christianity out of Ethiopia. And then boom, you see that the Caucasian took it and ran with it. But all of this go back to Inki and Enlil, and all of it go back to the Anunnaki. Which you have good Anunnaki and you have bad Anunnaki. Anunnaki, Anunnaki or Anachnu is actually in your Torah, what they call the Bible. It's, it's in there. Inki and Enlil is in your Bible. When you think words like Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahawah, hmm? Yahu, where you think all these coming from? Yahashua, Yeshua, Yahawasha. Like once you really start getting into the Hebrew and studying etymology and stuff like that and start looking up the different names inside the Bibles and where they was at and start looking at the names of the cities, it'll tell you the city of Anu. Genesis chapter 10. Think verse what, 15? City named Kalel. You looked that up, city of Anu. Hold on. What is the Anu, God Anu doing in our Bible? Hold on now. Who we? Why, why is Anunnaki in our Bible? Spelt in the Hebrew tongue, in the Hebrew. Anunnaki. Oh, you got to start asking yourself certain questions. Who was who was this serpent? Was it really a reptilian shape-shifting being from the inner planes of the earth? Huh? Did this Negro come from beyond beyond the ice wall? Where, where did he come from? Who, who, who we? I'm just saying. It called him a snake. Was it a snake or was it a reptilian being from beyond the ice wall? Huh? Did, did he slither in from outside of the dome? Do you start talking about the firmaments of heaven, the primordial waters, and the beginning? Bereshit bara Elohim et Hashemayim et. You start reading it in Hebrew, you like, hold on, what's really going on here? I'm just saying. Yeah, man, get y'all research on. Once you start really researching, you be like, boy, a lot of this, a lot of different, a lot of di there is really no difference in religion. It's all telling the same story in its own version. Uh, Depending on the culture. Like, for instance, in every religion, there's a flood. Every religion, there's a great flood. Every religion, there's a great flood. 
Every religion, you have a God. Every religion, you have a so-called devil. Every religion. Every religion, you have something called a judgment day, or you call it karmatic law. Wherever a man soweth, he shall reap it. Every religion. I'm just trying to teach y'all about duality. There's always an up and a down, an inside or out, a black or white, a fat or skinny, a beautiful or ugly, a cold or hot. You're going to get that in every level of plane of existence, family. So a lot of people thinking that I don't know what I'm talking about or this, what I'm saying is taboo. I'm not really studied up. I have my own congregation, me and my big brother Malachi Maccabee. I taught the Bible in and out on a scholarly level for over 11 years, y'all. I know what I'm talking about. But, you know, everybody ain't going to get it, and that's cool. I'm not here to knock nobody. Shalom, shalom, shalom alakha. I'm here for my Hebrew brothers, my Hebrew sisters. I'm here for my gods and goddesses. Peace to the gods, peace to the earth, nation of gods and earth. I'm here for my Muslims. I'm here for anybody that's for the advancement of our people, whether it's mentally, physically, emotionally, family. That's it. That's it. But we can start talking more about this stuff, y'all. I mean, just go on, uh, on my YouTube page, YouTube, uh, Yaki TV. You know they took my other one down. Hopefully I have it back up and running soon. But Yaki TV, go on there and look that up. And uh, You know what I'm saying? I got some stuff on there where I talk about the Christ consciousness. I show how Christ is really you in the body, how the chakras, all of that is in the Bible, all of it. You just have to learn how to decode the codex. Yes, even to my Islam brothers. Islam, Islam, I self law and master. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, what they say, the master of many is a master of none. But a master of none is better than a master of one. So, remember that. A master of many is a master of none. But the master of none is better than the master of one. <laughs> Straight up. Here a little, there a little. You know what I'm saying? Get, get your intellectual properties. Stick your intellectual nose and eye in everything. If it even strike your spirit, study it, research it, read it, read it, read it. Try to, try to, you know, application of knowledge is a powerful. Try to apply it. See if it worked for you or not. That way, when you speak, you boldly speak about it because you experienced it. Can't nobody tell you shit that you experienced. Once you experience something, that can't nobody tell you nothing. I experienced it. I ain't learned this from Google. I ain't learned this from a teacher. I ain't learned this from a pastor. I ain't learned this from a cult leader. I ain't learned this from, from a uh, 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 bishop. Do 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 do. You know what I'm saying? Learn this from my father. I ain't learned this from my uncle. I learned this from experience. It hit different when it's time for you to regurgitate. When it's time for you to really talk about it and you experience, ooh wee. Why y'all think I'm so confident when I'm talking about now? This this clinical trials, this ex, this experience. This experience. Huh? Yes, I challenged my whole Hebrew community. I ain't look, I went through my my worst part. I went through my worst part. I don't care about what nobody think about me no more. Once I made it through that, I had questions about the Bible. Couldn't nobody answer, so I started challenging people. When the whole community turned their back on me, but my brother Malachi Maccabee, you know what I'm saying? And Nehemiah, the whole community, they shut me down, shut me off. <laughs> they kicked me to the curb. <laughs> So, you know what I'm saying? When, once you start asking real questions and once you start really, really questioning people and challenging their thought and where they got their thoughts from, ain't nobody going to like you. I'm not trying to be liked. I'm trying to heal my people. That's, how, that's I'm here to heal y'all. That's it. Mentally, physically, and emotionally. And you're going to get haters from that. That's why you got so many hating herbalists calling me out, calling my name, want to challenge me and stuff like that. I got too much work out here on the web for you to challenge me. Challenge the work that I already put forth. Challenge the work that I already put forth. I got thousands of hours of videos, <laughs> testimonies hung up there, everything, where I'm going into in-depth teachings. 